Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here and welcome to 2021 and welcome to a new video and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. Hopefully, I keep some sort of schedule going through 2021. I've bought a lot of new equipment for both streaming and video production. I plan on doing a lot more. I really want to get back into doing regular video uploads at least three times a week or something like that. Doing deck profiles, combo videos, or just various you know Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Uh, whether it's discussion topics or whatever, and I want to live stream a bit more consistently than I've been doing as well. But anyway, one of the things that has got me really, really back into loving Yu-Gi-Oh, even though we do not have events, we don't have anything going on, is this deck that's in front of you. This Drytron deck. This Drytron strategy. I love this deck. I haven't had so much fun playing a deck and learning a deck and learning all the intricacies and all that sort of stuff of it since like Luna Lights with Tiger at the beginning of the year. Like I gravitated towards that deck really hard and I really, really, really liked that deck. So in a format where we have remote dual events, uh, we have no actual like tangible YCSs anywhere in the near future or regionals, I still went out to buy this deck in its entirety and I'm in the process of rarity upgrading it as well because it really, really sparked my interest in Yu-Gi-Oh again, like to an amazing degree. So. I want to show you this deck list, uh, my personal take on this deck list. I've been playing uh, Drytron a lot. This is a 43 card main deck. I'll show you main extra inside. Um, and there's some specific things I'm playing that other people are not playing. Specific cards I'm playing for specific reasons over other cards that are being commonly played. Uh, and overall, it's just my take on the deck. And if you're interested, then hopefully you stick around. But before I get into the deck list, if you're new here and you want to see more content, I've got a lot of stuff planned for 2021 that I want to do that I'd love to have you guys on board for, especially the new Dragoonity cards that I'm very well known for, being a Dragoonity duelist, uh, coming out at the end of March. I'm going to be doing a lot of content on that, so if you're interested in any of that sort of stuff, subscribe if you haven't, and if you like the video, make sure to drop a like, it helps out with the algorithm. But anyway, let me show you this deck list without further ado. It is a 43 card main deck, uh, starting off with three copies of uh, Drytron Alpha Thuban, two copies of Drytron Zeta, two copies of Drytron Delta, and then one copy each of Beta and Gamma. Uh, the specific, uh, like, nine names being this ratio is because Alpha is obviously the best one because it gets you access to Benton if you didn't already have it. If you do have access to Benton, it gets you a different ritual monster. Zeta is the next best one, but I do not want to play three of it because you have so much access to the ritual spell through other means anyway, through the field spell adding it if you already had Nova, uh, through searching manju off benton and then normal summoning manju usually that's a play as well because the plus one you get there and not having enough uh, drytron names means that you have to get to that because getting to the ritual spell off manju means you can do a union carrier play which gets you access to another drytron ritual um or not drytron ritual drytron name uh and then two delta because this card is kind of like a pseudo upstart goblin it's the only other one of like the main names that gives you an immediate advantage Whereas Beta doesn't do anything except for maybe put a card back that's banished if your opponent DD Crows something or or whatever. It's very, very low impact, but I wanted it for a separate name because I want all the names in circulation as fast as possible. And then one copy of Gamma because this card is a fantastic ending piece because it's the only one that like puts additional Drytron bodies on the board and actually lets you summon them in attack mode. Gamma summons itself in defense mode, but it summons the monster you summon off of it in attack mode, meaning you can have very easy Boral Sword game shots with this deck by making Boral Sword and then summoning uh, Gamma and summoning the one back in attack mode. So you have 2k and then two attacks with the Boral Sword being 3k, or boosted based off if it ran over a monster or not. But these are the names. Uh, nine names. I considered putting a third uh, Zeta in to be a tenth name. Uh, but like the deck list is already at 43 cards and I don't really think I have any problems seeing Drytron names because every Drytron name is like an 11 of or something. Like there's 19 total Drytron names in the deck if you count all of the cards that search them and themselves. But honorary Drytron is Dawn Knight. Uh, you access this card through Union Carrier and you use the uh, the ritual spell to get rid of the Union Carrier with this equipped to it. This goes to Grave from your field. You get to send another Drytron from your deck to the Grave. So Union Carrier becomes a very fantastic combo piece in this deck. And so, like I said, honorary Drytron name. And because I'm not playing the Vandy's Ruler version, because I think that version is pretty boring and also pretty limiting, uh, if you are opening yourself up to being able to normal summon cards that are not Vandy's Ruler because you're not playing the card and not trying to funnel your gameplay into that, then you can heighten your ceiling through other interactions and also turn cards like Dawn Knight, Manju, and Cyber Patine Angel, which are in this list, into cards that are not Garnets to draw. Whereas, if you're playing the Vandy's Ruler version of this deck, yes, you have a more, like, stout card in terms of Vandy's Ruler being as good as it is, but you turn those cards that are really high-value cards 
Um, if you are normal summoning them, like Dawn, Night, Manju, Cyber Patina Angel, you turn those cards into Garnets if you draw them because you don't want to normal summon them because you want to normal summon Vandy's Ruler. So I'm trying to combo and I'm trying to make as big of uh, like threatening boards as I possibly can uh, without relying on Vandy's Ruler as like a crutch. But that's all the Drytron names and then the, the honorary Drytron, like I said. Uh, for Ritual Monsters, we're obviously playing three copies of Cyber Angel Benton. Uh, I expect this card to get hit. Uh, it's not designed well. Uh, it wasn't even designed well when it came out, but the Ritual decks that it was being used in weren't that good. Like the Herald of Perfection decks back in the time were still doing some objectively <laughs> insane things. But this card, uh, like... Uh, this card was never, like, okay in terms of how its design was, because it specifically brought Herald of Perfection from an irrelevant deck up to something that was at least being considered for rogue status. And if one card can do that, even all the way back in 2016, it definitely wasn't okay then. Um, the card is objectively, like, poorly designed. Uh, it's really good, and I love the card. I don't want it to get hit, but it is poorly designed. Um, it has been since day one. So... Like, it just needed the right deck to come across and abuse it, and all these Drytrons with what I like to call soft ritual summons, uh, with their own summoning mechanic, um, definitely abuses this card very heavily. Uh, one copy of Cyber Angel Natasha, this card is literally an insane Dragon Ruler-esque card for this deck. Uh, this card is literally just like a recovery game plan all by itself. Uh, it's insane because you just gain life points so you can win in time or just keep yourself from dying. If your opponent is hitting you, like bringing your board and getting chip damage in, but then you use this to recover a board, you can just gain life points each time you bring it back. It's not a hard once per turn on any of its effects, so you can just gain like 4k life, stealing your opponent's board in the process. So now they have to break their own board that you just took from them, and uh, they have to, they're still, and they're uh, further out of a game shot range, so they can't like cheese the game away from you. And then uh, one copy of Herald of Perfection. I'm playing this over Herald of Ultimateness uh, for three very important reasons. Uh, the first reason is that uh, Herald of Ultimateness is a little bit stronger than Perfection in the aspect of it has 3,000 defense and it negates special summons. So the special summon negation of the 3k defense only really matter in the uh, face of like Alpha the Master of Beasts, which is not super popular in the format. But with this version of the deck, Perfection could lose to Alpha the Master of Beasts, but only if they have two of it. Because the first one would get popped with Megalith Fool, which is always, you know, on our ending board. Fool into Bethor. Yeah, it sucks that they baited our Fool into Bethor, but we still have, like, five negates on Herald of Perfection, so I don't think they're winning that game regardless, right? Uh, and then, like, like that's pretty much the only interaction, like, in terms of, like, on the ending board that Ultimateness has that's better than Perfection. But in terms of the second reason why I'm playing Perfection, it being a level six is super relevant in a lot of different aspects. It being addable off Preparation of Rights where Ultimateness isn't is a huge deal. It being summonable out of your hand very easily with your Megalith cards like Ophiel or Ak by using them plus like a Benson in your hand to summon this. Whereas Ultimateness would require you to only ever summon it with Meteonis Drytron, the Ritual spell, or you have to use like Ophiel plus Cyber Angel Benson plus something like a Herald of Orange Light that you searched in order to get Ultimateness out of your hand. So you just go minus for no reason. And so like those reasons, the level of this card being six uh, is like the, uh, the aspect that makes it really, really valuable. And then the third and final and most important reason why I'm playing the card is that the price of Herald of Ultimate is tops out at about $3, where this near mint first ed ultimate Herald of Perfection is $85, lowest on TCG player. So, like, you just get to flex on your opponent with a card that has superior aspects in terms of how you can play it and summon it and get access to it, but then it's also just more expensive. So, like, you can just justify yourself with that. And personally, I really like the third reason. Uh, but anyway... I'm playing Megaliths as well because the Megalith version allows you to combo really deep into certain uh, game states, and Bethor is a really, really insane card. But so, two Bethor, two Fool, one Ophiel, and I'm also playing one Megalith Ock, which is not something a lot of people play. I'm trying to access as many cards as possible with this deck. I'm trying to draw cards, draw cards, draw cards. The more cards I have access to, the bigger my engine and resource pool is, the harder it is going to be for me to lose the game. So, what I'm going to be trying to do every single board and every single game that I play is summon Fool, use Fool to go into Ophiel, or if I start with Ophiel, I can use Ophiel to get Fool and then Fool into Ock. I mean, these are these are the same card. Uh, this is just another name, so it makes Bethor better. So, like, that's why I'm playing that instead of, like, the third Fool. Um, Ophiel into Ock. Ock draws one, discards one. So, you can draw, like, the most common aspect of, like, what I try to do is I try to draw a power card, like, Preparation of Rights or another Drytron name, and then discard Herald of Perfection that I've searched, because I'm going to be summoning Herald of Perfection out of my grave off Meteonis Drytron anyway. So it's just a free card to draw. It just turns a card that I was going to summon anyway, but I get to summon it from grave into a new, fresh draw. 
Um, and like, so it's just like, it's, it's really good in that aspect. It just helps me gather resources. And again, it's just another name towards Bethor because I'm trying to use Bethor to pop for like six cards. I, I don't want to pop like two. I want to pop between three to six, uh, reliably. So that's all the ritual monsters that I'm running in the deck. For the rest of the monster monsters, the uh, fairy package that isn't the rituals, uh, one Manju, one Cyber Petite Angel. I'm playing this over Purple Light because it's okay to draw it. You can use it in Search of Benton. Uh, one copy of Eva and then three copies of Herald of Orange Light. Now this kills me because I know I have three ultis somewhere in my possession from World Chalice. But they are not with my pile of World Chalice cards. They're somewhere in my house. I have yet to find them. I know as soon as I buy new ultis, I'm going to find them. And then I'm just going to have six... And that's going to make me upset. So, in the meantime, I'll just keep using these commons until I find my uh, my set of ultis. But that is uh, 27 monsters. And then for the spells, there are 16 of them. Two copies of Fafnir and one copy of Terraforming instead of the third copy of Fafnir. Because it makes the deck overall better um, instead of playing the third Fafnir. Like, the chances of me drawing exactly this card when my opponent draws Droll is low enough for me to justify playing this instead of the third copy of the field spell. I'm not going to live in fear of that like microscopically probable action and interaction uh but because i'm trying to draw a lot of cards through cross sheep uh delta ock uh and another card that you'll see later uh if i open this instead of the uh the like for like if i've had three field spells in and i open a field spell then i'm always going to have those two field spells in the deck whereas if i do draw this and use it for the field spell then i'm removing a whole nother card out of my deck which makes my draws better uh, off the cards that I'm trying to turbo into more resources because I don't want to draw duplicate field spells off the cards that I'm trying to draw into. I'm trying to draw into power cards that I can actually use. Uh, but three copies of Drytron Nova and then one copy of Meteonis Drytron. Uh, these cards are insane. Uh, Nova is a wild card. I can't believe that this card is as good as it is, but it's insane. Um, like this card alone is just tons of cards by itself because like you get access to alpha link Kribo, so you keep the monster resource and then the alpha summons itself back and then you get access to benton which then flows to a, a bunch of other monsters so like this is just nuts uh this is one of the best ritual spells that has ever been in the game because it breaks the rules of the ritual mechanic you ritual using uh the attack value of the monster instead of the levels so that's neat uh carrying on with more spells just generic power spell uh preparation of rights this card is obviously nuts it searches benton so it's a starter card adds uh perfection adds back uh medium as drytron for subsequent uses past the two you normally get turn one so you can actually have very skilled interactions with how you play this card uh also like you could discard medium as drytron for like your cross sheep or your awk resolutions if you draw into a prep because then you can just prep for a card and then get it back anyway so like it just makes those interactions better a lot of stuff can't say enough good things about prep Three copies of Cyber Emergency because it's just three copies of uh, additional copies of every Drytron in your deck. Uh, same thing with Foolish Burial, even though it's worse than Cyber Emergency because it doesn't combo um, as well because you don't get the card to hand, so you can't pop it out of hand for a different Drytron name. Uh, but I mean, it's still fine. It's still worth it because it's still another name. Uh, just additional Drytron names because we want that sort of flexibility. And the last two cards in the main deck are tech cards. Uh, I'm trying to just not get hand trapped uh, as much as possible. I'm trying to get trolled specifically because that's the only hand trap that I feel like you hard lose to. And so Instant Fusion, which is going to be obviously summoning Millennium Eyes Restrict and Call by the Grave. So I can just negate choice hand traps and save the Herald of Orange Lights that I search for things that would actually matter, like Nibiru or something that like those can't deal with. But for the extra deck, one copy of uh, Zeus, one copy of Kiki Nagashi Fuko. Uh, these are what I'm playing for my Zeus package. I do not like the Lyralisks uh, right now. I don't think it's necessary. Usually you can just Fuko attack into a defense position monster. It's unaffected by all card effects, so you just attack into something that's in defense position. There's usually always something in defense position. Conk, Golden Lord. Uh, these cards are being summoned in defense position very often. Dryden is always in defense position because it's always really small. Um, so you can just attack, uh, ping this into a defense position monster, and then slap Zeus on top of it. Uh, and, like, the only thing they can do is strike Zeus, and that's it, or else they lose their board. Uh, they have to have, like, specifically a card that negates the summon or negates the effect directly of Zeus, or else they lose. Um, funny card that I like to play, Digesto Emerald. I love this card, and I make it almost every turn one that I'm able of, you know, to search Manju and normal summon it, which is all, every average hand. I'm trying to put back my Cyber Angel Bentons, because I want my resource pool to be a lot larger, especially on subsequent turns. Uh, you got to remember, I'm an old Necros head from like 2015, and Necros was putting its resources back with Digesto Emerald over and over again, being a very, very like almost infinite resource pool. That's what made that deck really good, is that you would not run out of resources. 
So I'm trying to take the same school of thought and apply it to this deck because there's a lot of parallels between this deck and Necros, even past the obvious it's a ritual deck smile. Um, but using Ock ok and Manju, after you've already drawn with Ock, ok, you've usually already drawn with Cross Sheep and dug for power cards. You overlay them into Digesto Emerald. Digesto Emerald puts back two Bentons and just another card. And then you have the other Benton in your hand and you just keep getting to search with Benton. And this stays part of your ending board. So you end up with full Herald of Perfection, uh, three Material Opelousa, and a Digesto Emerald on board usually. And so that's a card that they have to out because if they don't out it, it's just going to be another plus one immediately next turn off of drawing an additional card. And that even is like as a part that basically doesn't even matter because like drawing the card is, yeah, cool, nice. But it resets the Benton pool again. So like your opponent doesn't want to play against eight to nine Benton effects, all being you know added from deck and discarded, added from deck, tributed, all that. So like uh, they really have to clear this card. This card becomes an insane threat next to like the stuff you already have just because they can clear the rest of your stuff. But if they don't clear this, then you just can reestablish everything you had because you have so many Benton effects to snowball into the Drytrons that you have in your loaded graveyard. So like I love this card. This is the this is the funny tech that I'm playing in the deck and nobody else is playing that I've seen at all. Uh, but I love it because I'm just trying to put back my Bentons. Uh, but for links, link ones, link Kribo and Anima, you have to play Anima because you need to make something that matches Link Kribo sometimes with a Drytron name in order to make Union Carrier. Uh, but Link Kribo is mandatory because of Nova plays. For Link Twos, Genator Transverser, Herald of Mirage Lights, Cross Sheep, Union Carrier, and Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, these are all basically just utility. This is part of the ending board and some of the things. This steals monsters, it's broken. Uh, this draws two and discards two. Some of the time, you, when you instant fusion, because you we play that card, you get instant fusion and you summon the instant uh, the Millennium Eyes into one of the zones that you will summon this pointing to later in the combo. And so then you get to draw two, discard two, and then revive a level four lower monster, which is usually like an Ophiel or an Ock, or a Fool if you had to link that away because you're uh, Drytron restricted, so you can only summon those, but you ritual summon them properly and you can bring it back with Cross Sheep, so like it means that that's even more of an extender. Union Carry for Dawn Knight is obvious. Nightmare Phoenix is a uh, generic Link 2 utility. The only Link 3 I run is uh, Nightmare Unicorn, and then we play three Link 4s in Opelousa, Boral Sword, and Access Code Talker. Again, three just very powerful Link 4s. Uh, Opelousa is for your turn one board. Boral Sword is for easy OTKs. You could theoretically cut it though, and Access Code Talker is just insane. Uh, so obviously we're playing it. And then the last card in the extra deck is the obvious Millennium Eyes Restrict for the Instant Fusion. Now the side deck is experimental, but I'm liking what I've been playing so far. Uh, I'm just trying to lose the le to like the least amount of like nonsense and variance. But obviously three Droll for the Mirror because we're trying to win that. Uh, <laughs> so like we're just trying to win it. I don't know what more you want me to say. Uh, two copies of Nibiru, two copies of Artifact Lancia. Uh, Nibiru sort of has overlap. It's not great against Drytron, but sometimes it's okay enough to play. Lancia and Nibiru are obviously for Virtual World. Um, and then I'm also playing two copies of Xyz Encore for Virtual World as well, uh, because I'm trying not to get VFD'd, but I could draw this for turn as my sixth card and I can hit the VFD with it. Uh, these all go in against Virtual World and these stay in when I go first because you're searching them off of Benton. Um, but like, if the, like, it's so weird because against virtual world if their hand is good enough to make double vfd it invalidates Xyz encore but it also invalidates nibiru as well so it's like it's not even like oh just play more nibiru and lancia instead of the Xyz encores it's like this has a little bit better utility in my mind uh and if their hand is good enough to make double vfd they can make one vfd through lancia and they were definitely making the second vfd through nibiru because the first vfd is used to call light so you can't get nibiru it forces the nibiru and then they make the other vfd anyway <laughs> while the while the Nibiru token is on their board so sucks to suck but those are the cards that i'm citing right now against combo and then for the rest of the side deck is for trap decks i'm playing two copies of dinko seka this doesn't go in against certain eldritch variants it doesn't go in against live twin eldritch doesn't go in against zoo eldritch um it goes in against like invoked eldritch because they end on macaba instead of like a card that pops like dryden and uh the live twin that pops out this card so you can't side in against that but then this also goes in against like dogma dolls uh, and like trap shit all variants in general because again they don't do anything uh that like can interact with this and i'm trying not to get schismed uh so like i'm trying not to get schismed i'm trying to get punishment and any of that stuff so like this is just a card that like you can just summon and it's a bomb against those matchups because you just summon it and then do whatever you could even make argument of like putting these in against uh the decks that it's not great against like zoo eldlich or uh, live twin eldlich the decks that have outs to this you can make argument of putting these in 
but you'd have to commit your game plan to searching a Herald of Orange Light that is live first before normal summoning this, because then when you normal summon this and they try to use Dryden to pop it, or they try to use uh, the live twin to bring back the other one to pop it, then you can Herald of Orange Light that. But it's like, it's not optimal, but if, if the situation arises for it where I feel like it's necessary, it is an option that you can do. Uh, so you can use it against those decks as well, but it's really good against the decks that I'm really trying not to get trapped against. Like, uh, like uh, Zoo Eldritch and Live Twin Eldritch are sort of easily hand handleable through like the deck's natural playstyle in Zeus anyway. Uh, the the cards I'm not trying to lose to are like Schism for Winda and stuff, and this just hard outs the entire shit all Dogma deck. So uh, love it. Uh, but anyway. One copy of Harpy's Feather Duster because it's legal. Uh, two copies of Twin Twister because, again, I'm trying not to get schismed. I don't really care about lightning storming the back row away because it'll just chain schism and make Winda, and I can't out that. Um, and, like, uh, you can Twin Twister, chain to the Eldritch cards. You don't you don't need to worry about those Eldritch cards going to grave because you're going to you're gonna end the game. Uh, you're <laughs> ending the game regardless. But uh, last card is one red reboot, obviously. Like, this card's nuts. Uh, but so like against uh, like Zoo Eldlich and Live Twin Eldlich, like these are the standard four you put in and the rest of your deck is just naturally very good against their deck anyway. Um, and then like I said, you could stretch to put the Denkos in if you want to, but these are for the other trap decks like Geist, Dogma Dolls, Trap Shit All Variants, uh, stuff like that. Uh, Guru is really good against because they don't shotgun floodgates. Um, yeah, all that sort of stuff. But so these cards, uh, these cards are just, you know, to try and help you beat back row matchups. Which your deck is already really good against because of the fact that the Drytrons are such a unique mechanic that uh, that work really well, um, like into interactions. But we just want to be able to blow those matchups out of the water. But anyway, that is the entire deck list, main, extra, and side. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know down below. This video has been long, but I'm sorry. I talk about a lot of things, and I try to give as much insight about a deck as possible, especially when it's a deck profile. I feel like a deck profile is fine to be like 20-ish minutes long because like you either zoom through it with it muted and get all the card information you want, or you listen to the uh, to the person who has built the deck and who has been piloting it and feels like this is the this is the way, so that um, like uh, like you get all that insight and that information. So like you get a lot of like uh, a lot of information out of the exchange. But anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, welcome to 2021. As I said, expect more content out of me. I know I've said that plenty of times in the past, but this is a new entire year and I am going to be trying my damnedest. All right. But like I said, subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more like the video. If you liked what you saw, obviously, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions, concerns, suggestions, thoughts, any of that sort of nonsense. You can also join my discord server, which is linked in the description down below and uh, talk more directly to myself and other people about this deck and other things and also if you're interested in my live streams there's a link to my twitch in the description down below as well but other than that as always guys thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual and as always take care i will see you in the next video